Today I'm going to go over a really exciting chess game that was played at the 2007 Bilbo Blindfold Chess World Cup. And this game was played between Sergei Karyakin and Magnus Carlsen. And we have the Vasalimo attack variation of the Sicilian defense. Very exciting ch stuff. And here, after queen out to c7, we can see that Magnus wants to play simply e5 and gain more central space. Now white could also play e5, and if white were to play e5 here, then we can see that black would have some initiative being able to attack this pawn, and uh, white would be able to get uh, good squares for his knights. So, you know, the game would be about equal, and that was another possibility. Instead we see queen out to g5, and white is just looking to go after the black king and really attack here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Magnus goes ahead and plays e5 now. Magnus could have played either f6 or h6 to dislodge the knight, but that would greatly weaken the squares around the black king, and black really doesn't want to do that. So therefore he plays e5 instead and continue, continues with his plan of central domination. Now, uh, Sergei Karyakin plays f4 in order to undermine black's uh, pawn center, and also to open up the f-file to bring in more pieces to attack the f7 pawn. And here, uh, Magnus has a couple of different responses. If he were to play d6, which I would not recommend, then white could simply take. And the c pawns are doubled, isolated pawns, very weak. And white also gets this huge attack against the f7 pawns. So, yeah, that's not very good. And instead of d6, if black were to play f6, then yeah, he is greatly weakening his king's side pawn structure and is also greatly weakening the squares around the king, so that would not be good either. Therefore, Magnus played the very best move, which is e takes on f4, white castles, and white's idea is simply to capture back on f4, and black stops that with knight to g6. Then we see queen h5, d6, and I don't agree with d6. I think that Magnus uh, should have played bishop out here to defend the pawn and therefore make it a little bit harder for white to get the rest of his pieces engaged in the attack. By playing d6, uh, yeah, by playing d6, Magnus is allowing white to go ahead and capture on f4 and get another piece into the attack. But, you know, uh, d6 does have a good purpose and that is to protect the f7 pawn with with the queen so that is a good idea but white is simply able to capture on f4 and now has a third piece attacking the f7 pawn weakness and here magnus only has one good response which is uh, g6 and if magnus were to play some other move like bishop out to b7 with the idea of simply castling queen side then rook takes and wherever the rook moves there will be a discovered check on the king it could be blocked with g6, but then the queen falls, and here black is simply going to be down by a piece and losing in this endgame, so that would not be good either. So instead of that, yeah, g6 really is the best move, and g6 is also good for another reason. It allows the bishop to be developed, and black really should be developing more pieces here to help uh, defend against this attack. And if black were to develop the bishop the other way and not play g6, that would also be very bad because it would interfere with the queen's defense of the f7 pawn. So yeah, bishop g7 is really good, and even though after rook takes f7, it looks at first like black is simply going to lose a piece here because the queen and the bishop are attacked, but Magnus has this really great saving move, bishop to d4 check, and that is really the glue that holds his whole position together. This check allows uh, black to gain an extra move so that he can move the queen away. And he does. He moves the queen out to d8, and it's really, really interesting here that uh, Magnus Carlsen has all of his pieces except the bishop on d4 on the back rank in their starting squares, and yet white does not have a check made here. And anywhere that this rook moves on the uh, seventh rank, it could be captured. And if this rook could... Uh, for example, if the g7 square were safe and the rook could move over to g7, and and not be captured, then white would be doing very good there and would be able to checkmate uh, pretty easily. Also, if the rook and the queen were swapped, then white would have a very good game. So let's, uh, let's take a look at some possibilities here. Uh, Sergei Karyakin plays c3, which is a, a good move. Just kicking the bishop back because if Sergei were to go in for this attack immediately and just take here on h7, then he will end up uh, dropping this rook 
on B2, and as you can see here, white doesn't have enough pieces to make this attack work. So the attack will fizzle out, and then he'll just be down material and be losing. So that's that's not very good. Therefore, C3 is played, and why not? You know, just kick the bishop back, and now this gives white a lot more options because he doesn't have to worry about losing the rook on A1. And here, rook to after G7 is play, which was not the best move. Instead, what white should play is H4. And uh, let's see here, black should play h6 because if black were to just make some random moves with his bishop, then white could get the knight out and get the rook into the game. And then before you know it, white is just completely winning here, yeah. Just check here, king here, and then of course, if the king were to, if the queen were to move here, that would uh, result in a checkmate. So the king must move back to c8, and then simply queen takes check and white wins the rook and will win the game here. So that is a pretty long variation, but that is the basic reason why after h4, instead of just you know playing some other moves over here, moving the bishop, maybe moving the rook, what black should do is immediately play h6 and force a series of trades. Now white will play rook out to uh, g7, threatening checkmate in one. Uh, the only defense is really rook to f8, and then simply, uh, white could then play a move like rook to f7 and once again be threatening to win material. And this would just uh, result in a perpetual uh, moves and would be a draw. So that, that would be pretty good. And here, black has another option. Instead of playing the rook out to f8 defense, black could play queen to f6. And then simply just trade off the queens, play rook takes. And uh, here... We can see that white will be up by a pawn here in the end game. Yeah, one, two, three, four, seven pawns versus uh, five, and black can capture here. But yeah, white would simply be up by a pawn and could even take here. So yeah, that's that's definitely good. Therefore, black would probably want to take this with the rook and then protect this pawn. And yeah, I mean the the game would probably be equal-ish because it is a knight versus a bishop and the bishop is much better in the end game but I, I feel like white would have pretty good chances here being up by a pawn so therefore instead of that what black should do is simply go ahead and take this draw you know so that would have been how white should have played this and he would have gotten a draw instead he played rook out to g7 and after queen to f6 um because h4 is not played, h6 has not been played, so white does not have this rook takes g6 resource, and therefore white is completely losing here. Yeah, the, the rook and the knight are both attacked, um, and here Magnus Carlsen just castles, and white cannot defend both the knight and the rook, he's going to lose one, and then black would be completely winning here. Now there is this idea of rook out to h6, but unfortunately it doesn't work. Uh, it does win back the piece, but then there is this back rank checkmate on f1. That's mainly because white has neglected to develop his pieces over there on the queen side. So yeah, after castles, uh, just simply knight to a3, bishop takes, rook to c7. And although white does win uh, three pawns for the piece, black has the bishop here, and the activity of black's pieces are going to be really good and are going to win the game here. Yeah, black is able to really dominate the F file and because of that is able to dominate the second rank and set up a checkmate threat here on H2 and there's really nothing that white can do about that. White tries to get something going with these checks but there's really nothing there. King H6 and white runs out of good checks and so therefore Kayakin just resigns because it will it will be checkmate on the next move. I mean, if you take the bishop, then obviously this is checkmate. And if you just do something like this, then uh, that would be checkmate. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you learned something from this game and how to attack and how to defend really well. And this is a good preview for the World Chess Championship match coming up next month, and I hope that you'll stay tuned for that and watch my vid videos because I'll have some really great analysis on that event. And I'll see you then. Thank you.